All right, praise the Lord, Pastor Steve Sterling from the Dallas Revival Center here in the heartbeat of heaven, Dallas, Texas. Uh, welcome all of you to another broadcast, another program. And uh, just God is on the move, you know, and he does what he does. He is what he is, and he makes happen what he makes happen, you know. Our job is just to abide in the vine, to stay with him exclusively uh, and to let him speak to us, let him talk to us, let him uh, lead and guide us and direct us and, and be our uh, our pulse for life, you might say. Hallelujah. And I like that in, uh, and I'm thinking about the thought of righteousness in Isaiah 3.10. It says, tell the righteous it will be well with them. Tell the righteous, look at that, it will be well with them or for them. For they will enjoy the fruit of their labor. Again, it's staying in the rest, staying uh, in his best, uh, passing every test and reaching the crest with zest. You know, the, the uh, scripture just keeps you alive, keeps you active, keeps you motivated, keeps you in the field, keeps you satisfied, keeps you blessed. And so you're not all in turmoil and anxious and upset about the daily activities or whether you're in or out or upside down it doesn't make any difference you stay in the word and you always stay solvent you know hebrews 4 11 says uh, whosoever enters god's rest also rest from his own work just as god did from his so god wants us to be resting in him let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will fall by following the same pattern of disobedience. When we get out of his rest, you get arrested, you know, by life's activities. Uh, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, all kinds of things uh, enter in and try to steal, kill, and destroy, John 10, 10. But Jesus comes that we might have life and have it to the full. He, he told us that... Uh, uh, we are to uh, you know, take up his cross and follow him. But he said his yoke is easy and his burden is light. You know, and that's, uh, I believe that's Matthew uh, chapter 11. <clears throat> and I'll read it from the New International Version. It says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. There it is. Come to me. All you that are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. There it is. Rest is his best. Pass every test. Was asked to reach the crest. There it is. Verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Learn from him. Wow. Amen. Learn from him. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Uh, he's learned how to pull under God's providence and walk in God's provision and walk in uh, full force in animation and making God decisions um, with precision. And so he uh, knows that it's nonsensical for us to be upset in turmoil and conflict and um, to be weary and worn out and burdened and these things are just not uh, the way God moves, the way God works, the way God plows. Hallelujah. And this is, you know, no doubt a quote from Isaiah, you know, the word that Jesus is speaking, but um, in Isaiah 28, 12, it says, to whom he hath said, this is the place of rest, Lest the weary rest, excuse me, let the weary rest. This is the place of repose. This is the place of rest. Let the weary rest. This is the place of repose. But they would not listen. They would not listen. I don't know why people have a hard time listening. People have a hard time understanding. They have a hard time recognizing or perceiving these things. God says uh, in Jeremiah thirty-one twenty-five, For I will refresh the weary soul and replenish all that are weak. Isn't that something? I uh, just, I love that. Uh, and again, that's going back to Matthew eleven twenty-eight. Come unto me, all you who are weary, are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. See, his heart is gentle, his heart is humble. Um, 
and uh, he's totally uh, synced with God the Father. And you know, if you really want to get to the bottom line here, it's um, Psalm seventy-eight twenty-two says, "Because they did not believe God or rely on His salvation." Psalm seventy-eight twenty-two, they did not re believe God or rely on His salvation. Hallelujah. You know, John 3.36, whosoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whosoever rejects the Son will not see, not see life. Will not see it, see? Uh, we just need to accept what God has for us right now. And, um, you know, and, and just believe what he said is true. Uh, and not stay in a place of negation where we reject and we um, resist. And we, we uh, do not follow fully on to be with the Lord and, and to what he's opening up for all of us. Numbers uh, 1437, uh, those men who had spread the bad report about the land were struck down by a plague before the Lord. Um, and he, he talks about it, it, it being contemptuous in Numbers 1423. No one will ever see the land I swore to give their fathers. None of these <coughs> have treated me with contempt who have treated me with contempt, will see it. This is the peril of unbelief. My God. Um, and you're talking to the ch about the children of Israel who wandered in the wilderness for 40 years in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 17. And with whom God was angry for 40 years, was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness, whose bodies fell in the wilderness, and to whom he did swear that they would never enter into his rest, was it not to those who disobeyed? So we see that it was because of their unbelief that they were unable to enter. So we, we were working on removing the unbelief quotient and getting that totally annihilated. So God has had me on righteousness all through the coronavirus Syndrome this is supposed to be the third wave, <clears throat> and they're supposedly sh shutting down some cities again and closing out all the public thoroughfares and, and, and discouraging people from getting together on Thanksgiving, calling it a Russian roulette. I mean, if, uh, it's so really ridiculous, but uh, let me keep you on the track here. You know, God's really had me on righteousness a lot. And when you talk about righteousness, you talk about his moral stamp, his moral integrity, his perfect, perfect, uh, our perfect obedience to the law, uh, with every, with every manipulation and stipulation of the law, uh, dotting every I, crossing every T, living up to it completely, fully, without sin. And of course, we know who did that: Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, the sinless one, came and and worked that out for us. Worked, worked through the rigors of that, and. Um, because of his righteousness, uh, we have the benefits of his salvation for us. Because when God looks at us, he looks uh, at the moral stamp of Jesus Christ, which is for everything. Uh, and, you know, he looks at us through the eyes of Jesus Christ, because we're in Christ. So he is our cover, so to speak. He is our go-between. He is our uh, fixer. He's fixed everything that has to do with all the legal ramifications and the legal repercussions of the law tender. My God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I mean, it's right there for the taking, it really is. We just have to know the word and work the word and uh, flow with the word and operate in and through and out of what God says in his eternal edicts and decrees, which are his words. Uh, his word is law. As word is total total mandate in heaven and earth, under the earth, land, sea, and the air, in every realm of existence. Romans three twenty one. Let's let's look at verse twenty. It says, "Now therefore, no one will be justified in his sight by the works of the law." I'm talking about before God, no one will be justified in his sight by the works of the law. For the law merely brings awareness of sin. The law merely brings the awareness of sin, but now apart from the law, look at this, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been revealed as attested by the law and the prophets. And this righteousness from God comes through faith in Christ Jesus, or Jesus Christ comes, 
How, does, how, how do we appropriate the righteousness? It comes from God through faith, having faith and trust in Jesus Christ who has paid the penalty uh, for disobedience to the law, for our justification. To all who believe, there is no distinction. There it is. To all believe. All who believe. Hallelujah. And I like what he says in Isaiah 46, 13. He says, I'm bringing my righteousness near. It is not far away. My salvation will not be delayed. I will grant salvation to Zion and my splendid Israel. See, it's not being delayed when you flow in righteousness. When you flow in God's edicts and decrees. When you flow through the uh, relevance of the Son of God and adhere to him by faith and trust that he is more than enough uh, to bring us in right standing and fellowship before Almighty God. And see, this is a total trust in God's merits uh, that he has bequeathed to us through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has made us legal. Jesus Christ has given us the right to operate. Jesus Christ has, has reparated and given us the right to function out of all of the kingdom of God and all that is bequeathed to sons and daughters of the Most High God. He's given us the right to operate uh, in the functionality of heaven and heaven on earth. He has given us that because he is uh, the qualification for all that and for our lives. Amen. Oh, my God. It's so powerful. So powerful. I mean, it's it's an absolute gift. It is. It's, it's a gift of God. And a lot of people can't see this, but they need to know it. Hallelujah. And, you know, it's a ministry. It's a ministry. Look at 2 Corinthians 3, 9. It says, for if the ministry of condemnation was glorious, look at all that happened under the Old Testament. Look at all the miracles that look look took place look at all of the wealth that was amassed look at all the good fortune that took place uh in regards to uh, god's people israel look at uh, but second corinthians 3 9 says for if the ministry of condemnation was glorious how much more i want to take the uh for if the ministry can have if the ministry of condemnation was glorious how much more glorious is the ministry of righteousness how much more glorious is the ministry because of the ministry here, ministry of righteousness. We, we need to receive. We need to believe that he's good enough, that God has made him available for us. He is the missing piece. He's the, uh, he is the, uh, he is what makes it all work. You know, 2 Corinthians 5.21, God made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Look, we actually become it in him. Hallelujah. You know, in Romans 9.30 tells us to pursue righteousness. And that's why a lot of people don't understand. They've got to keep their minds and hearts geared and, and glued and governed by the fact that Jesus is righteous. We are not righteous. He is righteous. We don't walk in our own righteousness. We walk in his righteousness. And it's not what we have done. It's what he has done. You see, if you keep those things in balance, then you're going to have enough ballast in your in your ship to float this boat and move forward if you don't gloat. And God doesn't demote. Listen, uh, Romans 9.30, what then shall we say? That the Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have obtained it. That the Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have obtained it in a righteousness that is by faith. It's a gift given to the Gentiles. weren't even looking for it, but God said, "I want them to have it." And uh, it's a right. It says a righteousness that is by faith, governed by faith, activated by faith, implemented by faith. So you just got to believe in it rather than believing in your own uh, dysfunction, rather than believing in your own uh, implosions, uh, rather than believing in your own. Uh, uh, disqualifications, you see what I mean? Rather than believing in your own misnomers about uh, how you think you merit anything from God, you know, you, you, it all comes because it's a gift given. And that's it. And that's why people can't, they've been so trained religiously. 
That's by their own works. Hallelujah. But you know it isn't, you know. Uh, it, that's the ministry of condemnation, you know, where the devil can accuse you, where the devil can uh, uh, make these accusations against you and put you under judgment in your mind about not being good enough. See, that's, that's where it is. Thank you, Jesus. You know, and it's 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 a lifestyle. You've got to continue to apply it. You got to get in the Word. You got to let the Word get in you. You got to hook up with God and stay hooked up, and keep uh, your mind and heart and soul open to know that you're qualified to receive anything that heaven has and the kingdom brings and sings. You got to know that in Romans one seventeen it says, "Therefore, uh, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith." as it is written for therein is righteous so god revealed from faith to faith one faith a move leading to the next faith move as is written the just shall live by faith there it is see and this disobedient thing the, the fact that we disobey and you know we're disqualified it's ridiculous we're sons and daughters of the most high god you know when we're born again you're not just going to reject a son because he makes a mistake are you Romans 5, 19 and 21, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. It's God's obedience, his perfect obedience to the rigors and the strictness of the law. This opened up a new living way for us into the holies of holies. Hallelujah. Yes, and so that's what I wanted to say about that. I, I can say more, but... Uh, I really had something in my mind and heart to share with you. Again, getting back to Isaiah 3, 10, it says, Tell the righteous it will be well with or for them. Tell the righteous that it will be well for them. <clears throat> for they will enjoy the fruit of their labor. You know, Isaiah 26, 2, Open the gates that a righteous nation may enter therein, one that remains faithful. See, we just got to remain faith-filled. We can walk through those gates of righteousness. Thank you, Jesus. It's not like a man, uh, according to Isaiah 29, it's not like a man who, who, who's, who's hungry in a dream and he's eating, but then he wakes up and he's still hungry. It's not like a thirsty man dreaming, he's drinking, and then wakes to find himself faint and parched. See, that is not the way it is. It is reality. This is not pie in the sky. This is for real. I see it. I witness to it all the time. And uh, I've learned that God's taught me through this uh, Corona crunch, you know, how not to be crunched. This corona, corona conundrum, how not to be in that uh, manifest. Hallelujah. I've seen God move miraculously in my finances, miraculously in my resources, keeping me healthy all the way through, you know, through and through everything. And he, he's kept me there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like what it says in Isaiah 45, 24. Surely they will say of me, in the Lord alone are righteousness and strength. All who rage against him will come to him and be put to shame. See, I've seen God deal with the enemy and how God has confronted the enemy and how God has demanded of the enemy on my behalf during this season. You know, Isaiah 46, 30, 13. I am bringing my righteousness near. It's not far away. My salvation will not be delayed. Look at that. No delay. That's one thing I'm finding out about when we flow in righteousness. There is no delay there. Because salvation moves swiftly, uh, accurately, acutely, in a, a full consummation of power. Uh, it's amazing, isn't it? Uh, and let me just interject this. I'll come back to this in just a moment. I mean, let me just take you to the throne here for just a minute. In, in uh, Revelation 5, in verse 6, is, I said, uh, John said, I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb that had been slain. As it had been slain, it had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Seven horns, seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth in all the earth. He came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and 
24 elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain. See, God's, God's given us the power to live out of the book, to live out of his word, to live out of his uh, revealed word, uh, his, his imparted word, his uh, revelatory word, because Jesus has given us the uh, unction and functionality to do so because of his worthiness. As they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, to open the seals thereof, thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us. Look at that. Thou hast redeemed us to God by thy blood. There it is. Out of every kindred, tribe, and tongue, and people, and nation. And has made unto us, has made us unto our God kings and priests. And we shall reign on earth. Has made, un look at that. Has made us unto our God kings and priests. So we're at a king priest level with God. And we shall reign on earth. Look, reigning on earth. Look at that. Reigning on earth. I beheld, I heard the voice of the voice of many angels round about the throne of the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, thousands of thousands, innumerable amount of angels, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. See, we've got to let that loud voice enter into the threshold of our consciousness, into the threshold of our mind, into the threshold of our soul, our emotions, uh, our will. Our uh, imagination, etc., etc., saying with a loud voice, "Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power." Look at that power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. Power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. Sevenfold manifestation. Amen. That goes with the seven horns and the seven eyes of the Lamb. See, He's looking intently uh, for those blood-washed saints on earth, the kings and priests that rule with him and for him, um, and he's releasing power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing, because his eyes see carefully the sevenfold perfect nature, his strength right behind it to empower people that are disempowered, uh, uh, that are disqualified, because and, and, and he's looking for those that are lifting up his righteousness, that know his name, that know his nature, that know what he's done, but carefully for them, that, that standing on his word and uh, uh, believing against everything else that God's word is true and everything else is a lie. Every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, verse 13, such as are in the sea and all that is in them, heard I saying, blessing and honor, glory, power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. So it's a forever thing that we sing and he brings. So we want to get back to uh, what we were talking about a little bit earlier, quoting some scripture. And uh, in Isaiah 46, again, I'll bring it again up. It says, Isaiah 46, 13, I'm bringing my righteousness near. It's not far away. My salvation will not be delayed. It will not be delayed. It will not be delayed. It will not be delayed. Get that in your consciousness. It will not be delayed. Today is the day of his salvation. Hallelujah. And you can find that in 2 Corinthians and uh, chapter 6, verse 1. As God's fellow workers, then we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. Look at that. It's grace. It's a, it's a gift given without any merit, without anybody earning it. Just take it as that and continue to keep it as that. Don't try to inject your own brand of morality into it, your own brand of right living into it. Look, for he says, in the time of favor, I have heard you. In the day of salvation, I have helped you. See, it's, it, it, when we have grace, we have favor. Behold, now is the time of favor. Look at that. Behold, now is the time of favor. Now is the day of salvation. And even the Apostle Paul said, we put no obstacle in anyone's way. See? And so there it is. It's all there for the taking and the making. Thank you, Jesus. And you know, the psalmist even prayed in Psalm 69, 13, but my prayer to you, O God, is for a time of favor. Look. We don't have to pray about it. We have it. In your abundant, loving, devotional, God, answer me with your sure salvation. It's a sure salvation. Hallelujah. 
Yes, and I like what God spoke about Jesus in, in Isaiah 49, 8. Thus saith the Lord, in acceptable time I have heard thee, in a day of salvation I have helped thee, I will preserve thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth and to cause them to inherit the desolate heritage, the desolate heritages, the desolate heritages. I'll give you for a covenant to the people to establish the earth to cause them to inherit desolate heritage heritages oh that's so powerful isn't it it's just amazing it really is it's, sho it's shocking you know i like what it says in isaiah 50 verse 8 the one who vindicates me is near who will dare to contend with me let us contend with each other god says who who, who has a case against me? Let him approach me. See, God's daring anybody to mess with with his people, to, to mess with his priests and kings that he made on earth. He said, let us confront each other. He, he's waiting for you to confront him. If you think you have a case against God, forget it, because you don't, because the blood nullifies you. His righteousness embarrasses you. His salvation uh, uh, desecrates you. Isaiah 50 verse 8, the one who vindicates me is near. He, who will dare contend with me? He said, God's saying that. Who will dare contend with me? Are you kidding me? You're going to fight God. Hallelujah. And again, let's quote Isaiah 45, 24. Surely they will say of me, in the Lord alone are righteousness and strength. All who rage against him will come to him and be put to shame. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, Ezekiel 38, 9 and 10 says, Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. God will storm and move in that velocity to anybody that messes with him. Hallelujah. And you know, Psalm 61, 5, For thou, O God, hast heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. You know, a vow, 61, 50, I want to just say that 6150 vow for anybody that really wants to activate what I'm what I'm talking about today and really get a fresh lease on life and get a renewal and get a refreshing and just get get God to move on your uh, on your uh, heritage uh, the heritage of those that fear His name everything that God's laid up for you everything that God has has made foundational for you anything that God has put together for you and you want to just kind of lace the shoelaces up and tie that bow at the at the top. Uh, do a 6150 vow and watch God move for you and reinstate you and put you in that. You can't buy it, but you can activate, especially if you're dealing with somebody that has the faith and the word on it. Hallelujah. You know, Isaiah 45, 24, surely shall one say in the Lord, I have righteousness and strength. Even to him shall men come and all that are incensed against him shall be put to shame. If you're fighting an enemy, if you're fighting an adversary, if you're fighting somebody, uh, an, an entity, you know, a corporation or whatever, you know, do that vow of 6150 according to Psalm 61.5 and see what God will do for you. Thank you, Jesus. And I like this because this is so awesome what God does, how he puts it together. Isaiah 61.10, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. Great rejoice, joyful, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation, hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decking himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. We're talking about be, be decked. What does the robe of righteousness do? It helps you operate in the highest possible levels of opulence, the highest possible levels of, of uh, wealth, and wealth enhancement and enrichment that God has for you, you know. As a bridegroom decker herself with ornaments, and as a bride herself with jewels. Look at that. Ornaments and jewels and all of the highest, the chiefest, and the best. According to Isaiah 61, 10 is yours. Hallelujah. You know, and so this is the key. One of the keys is, is Psalm 71, 16, and 19. You know, I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of thy righteousness even of thine only. Look, I will go and make mention of thy righteousness, even of thine only, not our righteousness, 
Yeah. And Job said it. It was said in, said in Job, excuse me, in, in 29, 14, I will put on righteousness. You've got to put it on every single day. Just put it on by faith. Uh, see yourself cloaked in that beautiful robe of righteousness, in that garment of salvation. See yourself. See, see the angels putting it on you. Amen. I will put on righteousness, and it clothed me with justice. Uh as a robe and as a turban. Look at that. As a robe and as a turban. Oh man, I'm drunk. I'm just so drunk just by just by teaching this lesson. I'm so happy. I'm so thrilled that just God allowing me to do this and opening up the expanse of understanding about this. It's so freeing. It's so liberating. It's so exasperating. It's so so exhilarating. It just blows a person's mind wide open to receive everything that God has. Uh, you know, and this this God's so faithful. You know, uh, Isaiah twenty five one. Oh Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name for you have worked wonders, plans formed long ago in perfect faithfulness. Plans worked long ago in perfect faithfulness hallelujah you know but a lot of people aren't going to pay attention to this they're just going to push it off and say well nothing to it you know just a man's uh you know uh sermon or whatever you know this is not another sermon man this is fact this is god fact and the people that do that are in a, in a world of a wild awakening believe me look what he says in isaiah forty-eight eighteen. he says if only you had paid attention to my word if only you had paid attention to my word, your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. In other words, it would just keep flowing, 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 going, 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 going. There would be no stops, no blocks, no crops. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, those that believe this, those that receive this, for the Lord, in Isaiah 51, 3, for the Lord will comfort Zion and look with compassion on all her ruins. He will make her wilderness like Eden, her deserts like the garden of the Lord. A joy and gladness will be found in her and thanksgiving and melodious song. There it is. My God. And God's helping us to ride up on the heights. I mean, you know, uh, on our wildest dreams and imaginations are just being manifest right now beyond our wildest dreams. In Jesus' name. Isaiah 40, uh, 58, 14. Then you will delight yourself in the Lord. I will make you ride upon the heights of the land and you'll feed on the heritage of your father jacob the mouth of the lord hath spoken it you know, Habakkuk 318 yet i will exalt in the lord i will rejoice in the god of my salvation uh for samuel 2 1 hannah prayed said my heart rejoices in the lord my horn is exalted in the lord my mouth is enlarged over my enemies because i rejoice in thy salvation and god goes to the once we operate in this for a long period of time well you know isaiah 61 3 tells us what we become to appoint unto them that morning sign to give them beauty for ashes oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the what spirit of heaviness that they may be called the trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified see god gets glory out of this as he grows us up we're not we're not uh, believing that we're appointed uh, ashes for the sake of ashes we're not believe that we're appointed mourning for the sake of mourning we're not believing that we have a spirit of heaviness for the for the sake of heaviness but we've been appointed amen to have beauty to have joy to have praise amen and appointed to be so rock solid we're just like the son of god hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah I guess I'm going to leave you with this last scripture uh, in, in um, Second Chronicles 6.41. Now, therefore, O Lord, God, into thy resting place. Uh, the, now, now, therefore, arise. Uh, Second Chronicles 6.41. Now, therefore, arise, o, o Lord, God, into thy resting place, thou and the ark of thy strength. Let thy priest, O Lord, God, be clothed with salvation, and let thy saints rejoice in goodness. Goodness goodness is following you all the days of your life you better believe it you got it it's yours take it take it by force in jesus name so if you want to do a seed miracle seed you can go ahead and uh, just uh, look up dallas for bible center and uh, you'll find a uh, pay
PayPal me hyperlink there. Click on that. You don't even have to be a member of PayPal to, to get involved with that transfer seat over right now. And uh, we'll get it to us. And also, uh, you can download the application Zelle uh, on your smartphone, Z-E-L-L-E. And then enter the number 469-335-3356. That's 469-335-3356. And then uh, go ahead and send a seed that way. Amen. A break loose seed, a breakout seed, a breakthrough seed, you know. Uh, that's that 6150 seed, I think. I really feel led for people to do that one. For thou, oh God, has heard my vows. I was given me the heritage of those that feel that I've got. Wants to put a shift. He wants to reach a transition. He really wants to throw this thing, this thing open, the high throttle in high gear, and just really give you everything that God has there, just waiting for you to flow with and go with Jesus' name. And uh, you can do that down, getting downloaded the Zell app. You know, putting in four six nine three three five three three five six or indoor send it in the mail. To Dallas Revival Center, P.O. Box 271636, Dallas, Texas, 75227, just like heaven. <clears throat> and enter in on your uh, checks or money orders, U A W O M I, U A W O M I, in Jesus' name as you comply and watch God bring you higher than the sky. Bye bye for now. God bless. God's best. Fill you full of zest. Pass every test. <laughs>